Okay, students, once again, a reminder that tomorrow you have your revision test one, right? Snapshots and your writing skills would be included. Secondly, tomorrow I'll be sharing a link for your listening skills. It's a Google quiz along with a video which I will share and you have to attempt it, right? For your internal assessment, your travel log and this assessment of listening and uh, skills is your internal assessment. Right, let's start with the revision. Then today we're going to discuss the next chapter from Hornbill. Yesterday we had discussed a photograph. We had discussed portrait of a lady. Now today I'll start with the next chapter that is we're not afraid to die if we're all together. Yes, uh, any problem with this chapter? Yes, Pratham? Any problem? Words are difficult because these are related to, you know, like what uh, sea traveling, the words are, they are related to that only, like nautical or navigation words, these are there, which is related to sea traveling. Now, what is this chapter about? We have here in this, like the words which are the technical words would be there. They're talking about the speed here. They talk about gales. Gale is the strong winds, right? Which is there. Then we have knots. Knots, once again, the speed at which it travels, right? Nautical miles, the distance which is measured in the sea, right? So we have the stern of the ship, the bow of the ship. All these parts of the ship that were there, right? The starboard side, the leeward side, the mast. I have discussed with you in detail. I, in fact, showed you pictures also showing the parts of the ship, right? So when we do about, uh, you know, this uh, story, what kind of a voyage is it about? What kind of a voyage is it? It is a sea voyage. Why did uh, the writer and his family undertake this? It was a tribute for Captain Cook, right? So he was the first person to travel around the world. And they also wanted to pay a tribute to this great adventurer, this great sailor. And so as a tribute, they also undertook this journey. Now, once again here, for any kind of adventure, any kind of risk that you want to take, and you're planning there, you know, like uh, you want to sail around the world, a lot of preparation is required. And uh, the writer tells that how he prepared for so many months, testing the waters which were there near England, and then finally sailing out to sea, right? So how he did everything, you know, building the ship, he wanted to replicate uh, the ships that were used at that time not the advanced ones which are there present day, right? But the ships that were of those. In that time, what kind of ships were there? There was a hull of the ship. That is a wooden body of the ship was there. There were these masts. What are the masts meant for the, right? The sail of the ship for the navigation, for the movement of the ship. Right? So if you look at the ship, what picture do you have in your mind? What things come into your mind? You have the wooden body, you have the oars. Yes, to sail or not? To move the ship? Yes. And here, because uh, like you have in the boat and all you have the oars and otherwise you had those earlier pictures, if you see the ship there and you had uh, at the lower por portion, there were these little holes. You could see from that the oars coming out and the sailors, they were moving or rowing. Uh, that. But here he's talking about a slightly advanced version and how they were able to control and manage that ship, right? The Now here it is also the portion of the ship which enters the water first. The part which is facing the pressure from the waves. The starboard side waves, like, you know, when the boat enters the water's waves, it is uh, like the direction of the current as it flows. So there is one particular side where all the pressure is there, right? Where the waves are hitting. Are you listening or not? Yes. Now here what happened was, who are the characters, the narrator, right? Alan Cook and Gordon East, he's there. 
he is talking about his journey along with his wife mary along with his two children who are they john nathan and susan right so sue and john right so these two young boys and we have with them there were two assistants or two crew members whom he picked up right they sailed from plymouth the voyage began and they started sailing towards south africa when they left south africa they like celebrated christmas on the ship it was very pleasant weather and uh, everyone had a nice time but as they started sailing from africa and they came to the indian ocean that was when the problems began right so the weather it started becoming quite uh, bad right the strong winds started blowing and the waves were rising very very high so what was the problem here more than the winds what was worrying the, the captain of the ship that was the size of the waves because the huge waves it could come and crash on the ship now as they started sailing as they started moving and the weather started changing the wind blowing very high the waves rising very high and when the sail is you know like a what uh, raised a high or it is open the wind is naturally going to get that lot of area in which to move okay so the speed of the ship is going to increase even further so what did the captain of the ship he made certain important measures that is so as to lower down the speed of the ship and in case if any kind of mishap happened the damage could be reduced what did he do that was he lowered down the sails there was only just one sail the storm jibby sails a small sail at the top of the mast and uh, that was just a fluttering in the wind right then what did he do he lashed everything very firmly with the outer railing right so that things would not fall over then all the members were asked to wear the oil skins or the waterproof clothing that they were right so in case uh, anybody falls into the water their uh, would be you know like uh, less chances of uh, getting a cold or the clothes right so that was done and all the members were also attached with the railing right so life skins here they were wearing the oil skin sorry all the safety drill was done and they were attached with the railing so a lot of preparations were done right but still what happened was uh, the captain what did he see uh, it seemed as if the storm was coming everything was dark and he realized later on that what he thought to be a cloud coming from the distance it was not a cloud but it was a huge wave and the wave came and it crashed on the ship right and it caused a lot of damage it did cause a lot of damage the side planks now what is the body of the ship made of it was wooden planks right so the wooden planks because of the waves coming and hitting even the deck deck kya hai what is the deck of the ship the top of the ship right okay where uh, the people they move around they walk around and then there are cabins underneath isn't it you have the captain's cabin there where he does all the navigation also other rooms are also there and what happened the wave came and it crashed on the ship there was a lot of damage the even the side of the ship right which was facing the waves there also a lot of damage happened and the captain of the ship because of this uh, great uh, wave that hit he was thrown out of the ship and he was tossed and turned right because of the huge waves because of the bad weather there were enough and the captain thought that i am going to die right it is the end but 
and even the ship also because of this huge wave coming and hitting what happened to the ship the ship is supposed to be vertical right it is there but the ship it turned and it came in a very dangerous position there were chances that the ship might capsize or collapse but once again a wave came from the opposite side and the ship became straight and the captain once again he came on board the ship but he was tossed around a lot and he had a lot of problems right he did have a, a lot of injuries but because it was such a critical time he did not have time to think about his injuries because he was worried more about the condition of the ship right his children also right his daughter she had a, a lot of uh, injuries but that time he says uh, i i did not have time to even think about what problem my children might have faced right so he tells his wife mary to take care to take charge of the wheel she was navigating the ship and in the meanwhile what did he and the two crew men do they made efforts to save the ship from sinking because water is continuously entering right so what did they do they stretched canvas across the broken parts across the smashed parts and so that the water would not enter but still at the bottom there was some place where there was that entry of the water right that water line was still there now he remembered that they did have uh, the pumps they went one of them had been thrown overboard and uh, like uh, he found uh, a spare pump and it was working and they started pumping out water manually also and the pump was also used to pump out water but they it had to be done continuously and they took shifts there they kept on doing that because they did not want the ship to be damaged right but uh, yes uh, even uh, the pumps it got damaged because uh, the debris getting collected in it the weeds coming and jamming it all up and so it was a very critical situation right now so this went on for almost uh, you can see two days at a stretch continuously and when they thought that now everything is under control what happened once again the strong winds they started blowing and once again the waves they started rising high now the captain of the ship is worried that if another wave comes and smashes on the ship it is not going to survive now what is his immediate uh, thought that comes that is he has to take the ship to safety right he has to go to a safer place so he looks at the map and he finds that or he knows that because he studied this area very thoroughly naturally this is one of the preparations that he has made that is he he reads or he wants to locate this place what is it isle amsterdam it is a french scientific base and it's a small island and he thought that the only chances of survival are if they are able to reach the island right so he makes a lot of uh, calculations the magnet uh, you know the compass and all has been thrown overboard so many things are there he tries to change the direction of the ship so that the waves do not keep on hitting on that side so the direction is changed a bit and he makes a lot of calculations and he navigates the ship towards that direction right because his only hope of survival of safety is if they are able to reach isle amsterdam so there they can at least stop there and get the ship repaired otherwise as the captain of the ship it is responsibility to take care of his crew right and he has to put his uh, you know like uh, family and his own self before others and these are the qualities of a good leader that he is concerned about others more than him self right so he makes his calculations and uh, he does uh, you know like manage to locate the island although he is very uh, you know uh, <coughs> pessimistic himself he is not quite sure that they will be able to survive or they will be able to reach that place so after doing all the calculations and everything so he just hands over the wheel and after so many days he just uh, goes uh, off to 
rest and he is able to sleep. And to his surprise, it's a late evening when he wakes up, it's getting dark and he feels that, see, I can't see uh, like any hope. Now it seems as if they have sailed past the island because it was not a very big island. And uh, because of the wind and the weather, there were chances that they could have missed it. But to his surprise, his children, they come and uh, they say that uh, like uh, he is the best captain in the world and they want to give him a hug. And he's very surprised at why now? He said, maybe in other days I might be a good captain, but not now. I'm not, I don't think so I am. But then they tell him that he was successful in locating the island, right? And right in front of them, they could see that island. And for him at that moment, for the narrator, it was the most beautiful place on earth, right? Why? Because that is where they would be able to find safety. And it was later that he realized his daughter, right? So she had a lot of injuries. So there was this blood clot also. And she not only had a swollen eye, but there were so many internal in injuries. And how many surgeries took to remove that clot. And that little girl never complained about her problem because she thought that her father was busy in taking care of more important things, right? So the children also, very young children, but they showed exceptional courage and uh, they believe in him. They believe that as long as they are together. And that is what uh, the little uh, boy says that we're not afraid to die if we can all be together. Yeah. And that is where the title of the story comes. And these little ones, they don't have any fear. They are really not aware of the dangers. They are not aware that yes, any tragedy might happen, but they're not afraid to die. And they feel that as long as we are with our parents, the family is together, we can face any problem together, right? And yes, this chapter, it talks about team spirit. It talks about leadership. It talks about cooperation. It talks about the need of the leader to remain motivated himself, to keep the members of his team in good spirits. And the captain does that throughout. How is this chapter a big tale, a big story of adventure? It talks about the thrills there, talks about the unexpected turn that the weather takes. That is no matter how hard or our preparations are, how long we have been preparing, nature still has the upper hand, right? And uh, we cannot uh, be prepared for the obstacles or the problems that nature might pose for us, right? And here it is, that is very rightly that he is uh, able to face the problem. And so many things happen and within the limited resources that were left, they were able to, you know, survive and how they saved the ship from sinking and from collapsing, okay, right? So this is here, yes, definitely there are going to be words which are related to the seafaring world. Yes, so what are the parts? We have keel. Keel is the framework, or you can say that base on which the sides are attached. Hull is the body of the ship, right? Then we have the stern and the, the part that enters the ship first, the stern of the ship, the bow of the ship, right? Then you all are aware of the mast. Mast. Mask, we all know very well what a mask, right? Why don't you change your seat then? Move one uh, bench forward then. Hmm? 
mast is there then we have the sails attached to the mast mast right so the sails are there here they talk about the storm jib the small sail at top right which was left uh, and the others had been lowered down so as to reduce the speed of the ship right yes what uh, are the instruments required for finding uh, the directions yes very nice absolutely correct they require the that is required or not they see the pole star also yes ab absolutely the map also they need the compass they need the map and of course old sailor stories you know that of course they have they go by the stars also the position of the stars right then uh, what else sun sailing towards the direction of the sun whether it is uh, what towards the east or the west that way is it okay what else do you think what is the purpose of the anchor of the ship what is the purpose of the anchor oh. anchor speed ko slow do to stop the ship right it is there yes it is there too of course here it was used also the anchor was washed overboard so they made a another one you know so they had these cans of you know like what these wax and all it was there right so they tied it up and made a makeshift or a temporary anchor so as to yes it could be to slow down the speed of the ship to give it some balance and support and otherwise anchor is when the ship comes to rest when the ship comes to harbor then the anchor is put down right okay so these are there do you think uh, it was uh, the boat had oars also did it have oars this boat did not have right so it was a much a bigger one ship here then there is the mention of lifeboats life what's the purpose of lifeboats what is the purpose of lifeboats used to save life or in case of uh, emergency so you see there on the side of the ship what is there those lifeboats are attached and in case of an emergency immediately they are lowered and the passengers and occupants of the ship they are you know sent in those life boats till uh, the help comes or you know some kind of rescue is there we have also read about may day calls what is may day what is may day may day calls s o s calls these are calls of distress telling that the ship is in danger the ship is in a problem right and of course so these signals are sent these messages are sent so if there are uh, ships nearby there are those ships that are patrolling or you have uh, you know like uh, other ships who could get that message and they'll convey or they'll come to the help right so mayday it's a call of distress yet yeah, the captain did send out miss made a calls but at that place no messages were going no signals were going out so he is not able to send he was not getting any kind of help okay right so these are some of the terms that we have to remember yeah when we do life boat we also do life jacket life jacket is for the people to wear and even you people when you go for uh, your boat rides or uh, you go for your ferry rides and also it is uh, quite mandatory that you have to wear the life jackets right so that you are a little safe you don't drown okay what other skills do you think are required to survive here in such a